So this is just a little disclaimer before I get started. What I'm working on today is an electrical device. It has some mechanical components. Do not attempt this on your own. These sorts of things should be left to qualified professionals. If you go out and do something and hurt yourself or your equipment or someone else, I'm not responsible for your decisions. Be smart. And sometimes the smartest thing we can do is simply leave things alone. I am a qualified electrician. I am a qualified mechanic. As such, I assume the responsibility for what I do to my own equipment. Be safe. Follow proper safety procedures. As I'm sure you'll notice, I don't. Not always. Sometimes. But anyway, thank you much and have fun. Safely. Howdy folks. I hope all of you are doing well today. So today I'm going to be working on my Snap-on FM-140A wire welder. A few years ago when I got it, maybe more than a few, I've had it for probably 10 years or so. It's been an excellent machine for the most part. Had a couple of problems with it. Had to replace the circuit board in it. But uh, the first issue I actually had with this machine is the gas valve that, you know, opens and closes to allow the shielding gas to come out the end of the stinger torch where you're welding. So the original gas valve in this machine was plastic, and I've long since replaced it. But it was a 24... Uh, we'll say between a 20 and 30 volt valve. It was most likely probably 24 volts AC as that's what most of them are. And the valve that I replaced it with was a 120 volt valve because I didn't have a 24 volt valve to replace it with and I didn't have the money to order one from Snap-on. But anyway, the way this valve connects is it connects through a regulator system instead of a flow meter. And in the past few years, maybe more, flow meters have gotten popular. And as I understand it, they actually work better for giving you proper the proper amount of gas for what you're welding, your wire speed, and stuff like that you know you can actually turn the flow volume up if you're in a breezy situation to help offset the breeze so what i did a few months ago is i got a old derelict millermatic welding machine from the scrap not the scrap yard the welding supply house you know where they'll take some of them in on trade even if they're not any good you know kind of the same way automobile dealers do you know bring your car up here any kind you know even if you have to drag it up here and we'll give you x amount of money in, in trade on it and so um i was able to acquire an old machine that wasn't any good and well because i wanted the carriage off of it you know the bottom plate with the wheels and casters and all of that for another project i'm working on so anyway as i'm tearing this machine down i um i come across the gas valve in it and so i'm thinking to myself this would probably let me hook up a more variety of of flow control devices regulators and flow meters etc to my machine than the setup that i currently have so i salvaged that and several other parts out of it I actually i salvaged the, the wire feed motor out of it as well because i hope to upgrade this machine to a tweco or miller torch at some point in the future since the snap-on stuff is so hard to come by well it's not really hard to come by it's just way overpriced and the only thing that'll fit my torch is uh 
snap-on stuff you know tips and defusers and um, nozzles and all of that stuff my apologies to yeah, a little problem with the brain this morning so um, anyway I intend at some point in the future to upgrade my uh, my wire feed motor to the one out of the Miller machine so I, I guess I've kind of explained what's going on enough so now I'll show you these things a little bit so like I said the valve that originally came out of here was a 24 volt plastic valve and it had cracked so it was leaking right out of the base plate on it and I couldn't buy just the base plate you had to buy the whole valve set up valve assembly whatever so I used one that I had on hand from a pneumatic control system like I said it's a 120 volt valve and I'll go on and tell you I've got the machine plugged up right now because before I started the video I was checking some voltages and whatnot to make sure I could make this work so anyway here right here is the valve that I the replacement valve all right and here's the wires off of it and I've got them feeding down right to the main contactor so this is a 120 volt machine and the 120 volts it comes right out of the power switch right here see which is really a circuit breaker is what it is and goes straight into the contactor and that's where I pulled my hot and my neutral from for my valve so what I'm going to be replacing it with is this so what I did is I took the model number off of the machine now I have the original valve that came out of the scrap Miller welding machine but a dirt dauber had built a nest in the back of it and I am not satisfied that I can clean it sufficiently without taking it apart and I don't want to take it apart without having a backup in case I can't get it back together for whatever reason so I got the model number off the machine and I ordered another one and I don't know if y'all can read this or not but it is a 24 volt coil on this valve with uh, I don't see a plus or minus so I don't see a safety range on it but anyway I'm sure that everything will be fine and I say that because now my machine is on I've got my wire feed speed turned all the way down so that I won't be feeding wasting wire I suppose I could just dis unhook the feed rollers though but anyway you see here I've got my meter leads hooked up to the original wires that connected to the original valve and here is my meter and you see we are pulling 30 volts so that should be within the acceptable voltage range of the new valve there's only one issue that probably isn't an issue but I'm a little concerned about it if you'll notice or if I'll show you I have my feed hose has a very small diameter of feed hose and this is the outgoing feed hose right here and that is right much smaller than this diameter here now it's not really a problem to overcome I just go to the uh, auto part store and pick up a vacuum line coupling there's two different sizes you know and uh, then I can connect them right together put a little uh, tie wrap around them good to go never have to pull it apart again but the auto part store is about 20 miles away so we're just going to hold off on that for now and I'm going to see what I have to do. 
without further ado, I will get on with the mounting of the new valve. Now, I'm the type of fella that a lot of y'all don't like because when I'm doing things like this, I don't sit around and take a bunch of measurements and break out the level and the calipers and the micrometers and all of that stuff so I can get it perfectly straight and in exactly the proper location and stuff like that. I just kind of wing it through most of the time because this is not critical. I mean, you can mount this valve in any direction, upright, upside down, or any other kind of way that you can imagine as long as you can connect everything and it's not flopping all around, shorten out or anything, shorten out any of the connections inside the welder machine, then it doesn't matter. So there's no need to take a lot of time trying to position the valve perfectly. However, it does need to be positioned in a safe location and I've got to be very careful not to run my drill bit or my hole saw through and hit any of the internal components inside the machine. In fact, I don't even want to hit the iron core on any of the transformers and that wouldn't bother a thing in the world. I'd just rather not do it. So given all of that, there's a couple of options here. Now what I'm gonna do is try to keep it relatively close to the same location as the original valve. But because of the way the hose hooks up, the back end of the valve has to protrude through the back of the welding machine so that I can hook the hose up and the hose can be disconnected and replaced if necessary. You know, if it should get burned or cut or damaged in any other kind of way. So, in order for my wires to reach and in order for it to protrude out the back of the machine and for it to not be in the way or for the connection point to not be in the way of where the tank sits on the back of the machine, I have decided to locate it right in this area. And if we can look right on the inside of the machine, right where we are, we see there's plenty of room between the top of this transformer and the top cover of the machine. However, there is a caveat. I don't know if that's the right word or not. So this valve, the way it's held in, is just got a little plastic nut and it pinches the back of the machine like that. So when you go to tighten up your hose, there's nothing to keep the valve from spinning. But there is. With the new valve came a plate. And right on the back of this hex, I don't know if you can see it or not, there is a square protrusion that sits right in this square hole. So, I'm kind of going to use this square hole here as a template to get my elevation and my side to side where it needs to be so that it's not interfering, so that this is not interfered with by anything else plus I've got to make sure that I get the top of the valve low enough or either I'll have to put it in upside down or sideways which will be fine but my preference is that the valve sits like this so I've got to make sure that I get it far enough down that this doesn't hit the top of the machine so I'll be back once I get the camera all set up for drilling alrighty folks um, so what I decided to do is to use the old valve to get my positioning because the old valve is actually larger, it's physically larger than the new valve is. 
so as long as the old valve will fit then the new valve will fit plus that also allows me the option once i pull this old valve apart and clean it up and get it stuck back together to keep this as a spare in fact it's possible i may go ahead and clean it up and use it now but i don't know how many of you use hole saws or or anything like that but it's always a good idea to pre-drill your pilot hole before you put the hole saw on the arbor because i have bent and broke a mini a drill bit by just running straight through with the hole saw on it without pre-drilling the hole also there's a greater risk of you running through and hitting something on the inside so anyway let's get this hole cut so we've got the pilot drilled or not drilled but we've got a center up here to go by Pay attention. You can tell when it starts getting close to going through. In fact, it is. I'm not holding my hand on the back side of the hole. That's just stupid. But once you get to a point where it's getting ready to break through, ease up on the pressure that you're pushing your drill with a little bit. And I didn't ease up enough. So instead of putting a hole saw on that arbor because it won't fit, I've already got my hole saw set up on another arbor. Honestly, I really don't like using hole saws because you see how wobbly this thing is. But for this, it's not precision, so it'll work. And again, you see, I'm not running the drill at full speed. I'm slowly working my way around. You can see we're breaking through in some places. This, again, is to keep from jutting through because this hole saw, once the hole is cut, will actually go further through than the drill bit alone will. And there we go. See, I didn't run through at all. Now, we've got a bit of a rough hole here. Doesn't really matter. Again, once this is in place, that'll keep it covered up. Alright, so it fits. But now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little sanding drum that fits in the drill. And I'm going to clean that hole up just a little bit. Actually, I'm not going to use a drum, I'm going to use a flapper. And I have to get another drill bit because this has mounting screws that go in it as well. I'll show you that when we get there. Be right back. All right, we're back with our little uh, flapper wheel, if you know what I'm talking about. I also use these to uh, hone out kingpin bushings when I'm replacing kingpins and kingpin bushings on big trucks and tractors and stuff like that. So, the edges are too sharp for my little flapper wheel, so I'm going to try the hole saw. Alright, now we've knocked the 
edges off with the hole saw just a little bit. Let's go back with the flapper wheel. And there we go. And look at there. Don't even have any metal filings down inside. Everything appears to have come out. And we're back again. So the way I'm going to get all of this lined up to drill these two holes is I'm going to take the old valve and get it stuck in my square plate and stick it through the hole. And you notice I've got it upside down. And we'll take the nut and put it on. Straighten it up a little bit. Still not critical. Just trying to make sure I get it tight enough. Sorry for that little interruption. I had actually chosen a drill bit. It's almost the same size as these holes here. And those <clears throat> holes will be threaded with the machine screw that goes into them. So what I need to do is start out with a smaller hole Again, being careful. Not to run too far through. Even though right here, there's nothing for me to hit. And just in case I haven't said it, yes, I did unplug the welding machine before I started doing all of this stuff. Now... We'll take the plate back off so we don't damage the holes that will be threaded. While we're drilling the larger holes. Again, being careful. Yes, I know my drill bit though. Well, I ran way through with that one. So, we'll check and make sure that these holes are the right size for the screws. They are actually a little bit on the tight side, so... What we're going to do is, for starters, we're going to move this to make sure that it doesn't get any metal filings in it. And I don't have the next size drill bit up in my drill index. So I'm going to take the one that I made the holes with and wallow them, or ream them, whatever you want to call it. Now, let's check again. And that's good enough. So now, take my old drill,
So all we're doing is running them up. And then we're going to back them out. Not quite all the way. Yeah, we'll back them out all the way. Because what we want to do is give enough play in the piece of plate that we can get the valve properly aligned with the plate and the hole. Then we'll take and put our screw back in it before we tighten the nut on the valve up all the way. And to tighten the nut up, I'm just going to use my 12 inch spud wrench. And there we have it. Now the valve is mounted. So, let's look on the inside and see if the uh, hose outlet is going to be interfered with by anything. Well, we are just above the transformer, so we're good to go. All I have to do is go get my screwdriver and take the old valve out. There's a Phillips screw holding it in. Then there are two flathead set screws that hold the wires into the contactor. And I have to figure out my hose connection. And if I have to go to town, I'll let you know. Alrighty folks, we've got everything all mounted up and I don't have my flow meter gauge quite plumb. So, break out the trusty old Bud wrench. And there we go. So I don't know if that's perfect, but it's perfect enough. Now I've got the machine plugged up. Let's see if we're getting any gas. Well, I don't know about gas, but we got a leak in the valve. Alright, I'll be back after I find this leak. Alrighty folks, so that's actually a good example, that leak I was just having. A good example of a common problem that a lot of us tend to overlook. What was actually leaking is where this male nut tightens up into the female valve. It's a metal to metal sealing surface in there and the slightest little bit of dirt, dust, corrosion, even tarnish can make it leak. So when you tighten these things up, you need to make sure that you get them really good and tight. And I don't mean wrench down on them with, you know, gorilla strength, but they certainly need to be tight enough. Anyway, we see right now that the ball is not up in the thing, up in the indicator, in the gauge, so let's see if we're getting any flow. Let's cut the welding machine on. And there we go. So, 
So, we're working. Let me open the valve up enough. Alright, we can peg the gauge, so that means that our hose that is feeding the torch is big enough. I'd say this job here is done. Short of me putting the cover back on the machine, I think we're good to go.